Hey everyone, God bless you. Thanks a lot for tuning in on this first day of October. I wish you a wonderful month. We celebrate the protection of the Mother of God today and the incredible Holy Apostle Ananias, Saint Romanos, the Melodist, who composed so much beautiful hymn that he for us. Oh, what a day. My reflection today uh, that I've composed for your encouragement, I will entitle The Incomparable God. I want you to think with me about how great God is, about his magnificence. The reason I want to do this is because a loss of remembrance, a loss of vision for the greatness of God is such a common cause of our discouragement, of our weariness. This last uh, Sunday, my wife, uh, President Catherine, came home from church and was giving me an update on her uh, her time with the young adults. She, three out of four Sundays, hosts a young adults Sunday school group, uh, and they have a lot of wonderful times there. And she asked for the everyone to say how they're doing and give a word. Uh, and she said, many of the young people said, tired or exhausted. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. It's important uh, when we are exhausted in our lives and tired out in our culture, and I would certainly say we are living in a very tired West. It's important to renew ourselves and to be reminded of how great God is. Even the great ones, not the little ones like us, but even the great ones like the Holy Prophet, much suffering prophet Job, had to be reminded of how great God is, so that he, his faith could match the challenges of his personal life, which is why at the conclusion of the prophecy of Job, God appears and reminds Job of who he is and how little Job grasps the greatness of God. And it was that uh, reaffirming in Job's life the, the magnificence, the incomparable glory of God that led Job back again to a proper relationship of trust to the Lord and to a deep repentance and humility. This is important for us. And there is hardly a chapter in the Holy Scriptures more important with regards to this issue of the greatness of God than the 40th chapter of the prophecy of Isaiah. I'd like to read some portions of that to encourage you uh, if your faith is flagging, if your faith is flagging, the chapter is very much about the glory of God and rem God reminding his people who he is. Isaiah 40, I'll begin at verse 5. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So here Isaiah is revealing to us that you're going to see God's glory. It's going to make it manifest. And he describes uh, first the lack of glory <laughs> of, the human, of the human being, uh, the lack of comparableness between the human being and God, so that we don't make the mistake of projecting onto God uh, our own dispositions. Call out, what shall I call out, the prophet says. All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forever. We who consider ourselves to be mighty, the arrogance of humanity is here laid in the dust. Even the greatest of men appears for a short time, like a puff of smoke and then vanishes away, St. James the Apostle says. And here, the Lord through the prophet says something very similar. We're like grass and flowers that fade away. The grass withers, the flower fades, but God's word stands forever. So the first measure that the prophet wants us to think about is how limited we are, how weak the human being is. And then he goes on and he asks this question, who can measure what God has made? This is in verse 12. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens by the span and calculated the dust of the earth by the measure and weighed the mountains in a balance and the hills in a pair of scales? So here, the prophet is telling us, look, uh, humble yourself and recognize that you can't even evaluate God's own creation. You can't even understand uh, the earth and the physical creation. And then he posits another question. Who has ever given God any advice? We can't evaluate what he's made. It's beyond us. So not only is 
The idea is if you can't evaluate the creatures, the creation of the living God, how are you going to evaluate God? How are you going to appreciate his greatness? You can't even grasp the greatness of the earth. And then he goes on and mentions the fact that God has never taken consultation with anyone. Who has directed the spirit of the Lord or as his counselor as has informed him? With whom did he consult and who gave him understanding? And who taught him in the path of justice and taught him knowledge and informed him of the way of understanding? Unlike us human beings, we learn everything from others. We are born uh, with great wisdom. <laughs> Hopefully we gather wisdom from wise instructors. Not so with God. No one have, has ever counseled God. No one has contributed anything to God's greatness. His greatness is, and his greatness is the source of any subsidiary greatness. And then this next text is really something in verse 15. All of the great of the earth, and especially the great nations, and the prophet Isaiah deals a lot with the threat of the great nations to the people of God, to Israel. He deals with the Babylonians, he deals with the Egyptians, he deals with the Syrians, uh, the Ethiopians. And what does Isaiah want us to think about them? What does God say? Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket. <laughs> they are regarded as specks of dust on the scales. Behold, he lifts up the islands like fine dust. All of the great of the earth, no matter of their self-concept, of their power and authority, compared to God, a drop in the bucket, a speck of dust, a speck of dust. To whom then can you compare God? This is what Isaiah asks next. To whom would you liken God? What likeness will you compare him with? As for the idol, a craftsman casts it. A goldsmith plates it with gold. A silversmith fashions chains of silver. He who is too impoverished for such an offering selects a tree that does not rot. He seeks out for himself a skillful craftsman to prepare an idol that will not totter. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been declared to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He it is who reduces rulers to nothing, who makes the judges of the earth meaningless. Scarcely have they been planted, scarcely have they been sown, scarcely has their rock has their stock taken root in the earth, but he merely blows on them and they wither and the storm carries them away like stubble. To whom then will you liken me that I would be his equal, says the Lord. What a magnificent text. This is a message to God's people through the prophet Isaiah. Uh, don't be impressed by the things of the earth. Don't be threatened by the great boasters of the earth, by the mighty nations, by those who wield power and authority and beat their chests. No, be impressed with one, with one, God. Bow low before the incomparable God, the greatness of God, before whom the greatest of the earth constitute a speck of dust, a drop in the bucket. It's extremely important for we who are feeling weary, who are feeling tired, to renew in our minds who our God is. Listen to what the prophet Isaiah uh, says now as he applies the greatness of God to our lives, to the lives of the people of God. We ought not live as though the great God does not exist or as though the great God is not great and for us or that he doesn't take notice of us or that he won't help us. Lift up your eyes on high. Do you not know, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he does not become weary or tired. We are the tired ones. We are the weary ones, yes, but not our God. He gives strength to the weary. He's there for us. And to him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youths grow weary and tired and vigorous young men stumble bodily, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow tired. They will walk and not become weary. So what is the message here? 
in this precious Isaiah chapter 40. Stand in awe before the incomparable God. Recognize there's no parallel on the earth. There's nothing that we can compare God to on the earth that is even close to his magnificence. He never grows weary. His might is fresh and capable and beyond measure every moment of every day. And we who are his may rely on him. We may put our trust in him. We may wait on the Lord. And in so doing, in so trusting in him, leaning on him, we will renew our strength and mount up with wings like eagles. We will run and not grow tired because we're running in the Lord's strength and not ours. As a matter of fact, feeling overwhelmed is one of the clearest signs that we need to stop and lift up our hearts to God, put our hope and our confidence in Him, renew our covenant with Him and our love for Him, and then we will obtain strength. Notice, notice how the Holy Scriptures here in Isaiah 40 first affirms the absolute unlimited power and strength of God and doesn't conclude from that because God is so great and powerful that he doesn't care about us. Wrong. It says that if it, the scriptures affirm that he is so powerful and he has chosen because he is love to make his resources, his strength, our solution. This is the God we serve. Part of his incomparableness, part of his greatness, is that his love is beyond measure and past human conception. And all of that power he places at the service of his people so that he can sustain them in the journey of this life and not allow them to fall down or to collapse in exhaustion. This is the message here. He is so great, he's too great to fail us, too powerful to abandon us. I'll end with a beautiful word. It's a description of the Lord God that comes from St. John of Damascus. I think you'll love it. As St. John, in the beginning of his famous text on the Orthodox faith, describes the greatness of God and how past human comprehension the Lord is. Listen to his words. Now, one who would speak or hear about God should know beyond any doubt that in what concerns theology and the economy of salvation, not all things are inexpressible and not all are capable of expression. And neither are all things unknowable, nor are they all knowable. That which can be known is one thing, whereas that which can be said is another just as it is one thing to speak and another to know. Furthermore, many of those things about God which are not clearly perceived cannot be fittingly described, so that we are obliged to express in human terms things which transcend the human order. Thus, for example, in speaking about God, we attribute to him sleep, anger, indifference, hands and feet, and the like. Now we both know and confess that God is without beginning and without end, everlasting and eternal uncreated, unchangeable, inalterable, simple, uncompounded, incorporeal, invisible, impalpable, uncircumscribed, unlimited, incomprehensible, uncontained, unfathomable, good, just, the maker of all created things, all-powerful, all-ruling, all-seeing, the provider, the sovereign, and the judge of all. We furthermore know and confess that God is one, that is to say, one nature, and that he is both understood to be and is in three persons, I mean the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one in all things, except in the being being unbegotten, the being begotten, and the procession. But what the substance of God is, or how it is in all things, or how the only begotten Son, who was God, emptied himself out and became man from a virgin's blood, being formed by another law that transcended nature, or how he walked dry shot upon the waters, we neither understand nor can say. And so it is impossible either to say or to fully to understand anything about God beyond what has been divinely proclaimed to us, whether told or revealed by the sacred declarations of the Old and New Testaments. That's chapter 2 on the Orthodox faith by St. John of Damascus. What a word! 
What a word. What we know about the Lord God and his greatness has been revealed, and his greatness is even beyond that. And even that which, we, which has been known by us doesn't mean that we can speak of it. There are things that are known and are incapable of speech and beyond speech. This is how great our God is. Doesn't it just take your breath away? <laughs> just, you hear that description of the one true God, which you know itself is not adequate for him. And we just lose our breath. God is incomparable and beyond every great thought that the human mind can conceive. And so I offer this word uh, to you Christian people. This God is your father. This God is the one who loves you. Trust him. Trust him, especially when you're tired, especially when you're weary. Trust him. Wait on him. Renew your strength and mount up with wings like eagles. Run and don't grow weary because you are resting upon the God that never wearies. God does not share our ignorance or our impotence. Be in awe. Put your strength in him. Renew your strength, Isaiah says. You know, that text can be translated, change your strength. The image is like changing clothes. Take off the weary clothes of doubt. Put on the clothes of faith. Renew your strength and mount up with wings like eagles and run without getting exhausted. Glory to our incomparable God. God be with you. Patristic Nectar Publications is blessed to present a new publication never before translated into the English language. Entitled Against All Heresies, with a dialogue against the Latins and chapters on prayer by the great 14th century Archbishop and theologian St. Simeon of Thessalonica. This profound work offers Christians a compact heresiology and a holistic introduction to the church's theology. Greatly edifying for both clergy and lady, Against All Heresies addresses critical issues of immediate relevance, including the Orthodox Church's relationship to both Islam and Roman Catholicism. This new text is available in two formats, a hardcover edition with the original Greek text or a paperback edition in English. It's also available on audiobook and ebook. Order your copies today at patristicnectar.org.